Hello, it's me, Jensen McRae. Normally I'm talking to you about music. Today I'm gonna to talk about something else. Before I get into that, you should stream Wolves and White Boy and the Plague, the three songs that I have out now. They're on all of the streaming platforms and there's videos for them on YouTube, so go follow, subscribe to all of that. The other day I posted on my Instagram story about uh, some fiction writing that I've been doing. I recently finished the first draft of my sixth novel and a lot of people were confused by that. <laughs> Yeah, I was like just confused. Either because they didn't know that I write fiction or because uh, they were just confused as to how a person could complete a novel. And before I ever wrote one, I was also confused by that. So I thought I would answer some of the questions that you guys sent me about my writing process and just like writing in general. So the first question is how do you start? Obviously it starts with an idea. You have to have something that you wanna say. I, I know a lot of people just start writing books because they want to call themselves an author. When I was a kid, I definitely wanted to be an author, but I didn't start writing novels until I had an idea for one. My freshman year of college, so I wrote my first novel when I was 17, my senior year of high school. And so the second one I wrote was my freshman year of college. The conceit of the book is that there was this band, they were friends in college, they started to take off, the band broke up, the lead singer went missing. Now, several years later, there is a financial incentive for them to track down the lead singer and get the band back together. I went to music school. I knew a lot of people in bands. I just like picked a band that I knew. I didn't know them very well at all, um, but I wondered kind of like what they would be like based on like the concerts that I'd seen them at. Um, and so I sort of invented basically from scratch their backstories based on like the very shallow information that I had about them. And obviously it became much bigger than just these like random people that I knew from school. It became like this like thriller, psychological mystery. I knew people in real life that I wanted to know more about. And I knew that short of just interviewing them and asking them to tell me their deepest, darkest secrets, I could make them up and I could make it a fictional story. In general, what I start with is either I wanna tell something that happened to me or I want to imagine what might be true about someone that I currently know. So I always start with like a kernel of truth. Do you find you're stronger at novels and other genres? If so, how do you improve those genres? I have never been published. I write a manuscript every year just to keep the, uh, keep the tools sharp. Um, and I always let my mom read them. And I don't know if anyone else has ever read them other than my agent. I don't know how great they are. <laughs> it's one of those things that you get immensely better at every time you do it because it's such a long, arduous process when you start your skill set is so limited. And then just even after doing it one time, you become infinitely better. I feel like you have to write a few hundred songs to get good at writing songs. But with novel writing, not again, not that I think I'm great, but after having written six novels, I feel like I'm a pretty strong fiction writer. As far as how I improve uh, in my writing style with anything, whether I'm writing novels or poetry or screenplays, which I also write, um, just like repetition. Like that's really the only way to get better at it. I had a songwriting education. Um, but I've never had a formal education for fiction or for poetry, screenplays, personal essays, never took any classes on that. And I'm not gonna like advise against it just because one, I might wanna get an MFA one day. Um, and also because I don't want anyone who's ever like been involved in programs like that to feel like it was a waste of time or money because it definitely wasn't. Really the whole point of those programs in my opinion is just to give you an environment where you're forced to create. Also reading and consuming other people's greatness is pretty helpful. How would you describe your writing style? It has, changed <laughs> over the years. Um, when I was in high school writing my first novel, I was obsessed with John Green as most teenagers are. Um, so I would say my first novel was definitely like my John Green impression. The first four that I wrote were very firmly young adult fiction, young adult contemporary. The fifth one was more new adult just because the age of the protagonist had aged up a bit. She was in college. And then the most recent one I wrote, it was my attempt at literary fiction. I'll say. My young adult fiction is heavily influenced by John Green, but also when I was a teenager, I read um, Kurt Vonnegut and Juno Diaz quite a bit, all through college. Um, and then the most recent works that I've been doing um, have been really, really heavily influenced by Elif Batuman, who wrote The Idiot, my favorite book of all time, bar none, um, and Otessa Moshveg, who wrote My Year of Rest and Relaxation. She also wrote a book called Eileen that I enjoyed less, but it's still very good. You can probably tell by that. My focus shifted. Um, to female writers because I was reading pretty much all dudes uh, when I was a teenager. Cause I was like really all I, that was what I thought greatness was, was, you know, the canon and you know, stuff that was winning Pulitzer's and unfortunately those are dominated by men as is everything else. So I was reading a lot of male writers and then once I read The Idiot my junior year of college, 
I realized that I responded to that writing in a way that I never responded to anything before. And I started seeking out things that were like it. And as it turns out, it's a lot of ladies. Not that I don't enjoy reading male writers. I do. I tend to prefer reading male nonfiction over male fiction. Don't really know what that's about. Just a trend that I've noticed. My writing style is very heavily influenced by those people that I mentioned, but also um, Buddy Wakefield's, the spoken word poet. I very, very much owe a debt of gratitude to him for my writing. Um, and then also like Justin Vernon, AKA the lead singer of Bon Iver. Um, his lyric writing is very influential in my poetry and in my fiction. Someone asked in all caps, how do you have a linear plot idea and stick to it? <laughs> and my answer is you don't. <laughs> I know that there's like kind of two categories of fiction writers. There's plotters and pantsers as they're known, the people who plot and people who fly by the seat of their pants. I find myself about halfway in between the two. Usually I just start writing not necessarily knowing where it's headed. Sometimes I'll know like the climax of the story or I'll know how it ends, but I tend to not really know most of the middle. And then as I go, like once I've written the first three or four chapters, I'll start to like slow down and be like, okay, how am I gonna take this over the finish line? At the same time, I think it's important to just like let stuff happen in the first draft. I think after you've completed a manuscript, you know, you can go back and get more detailed and be like, this plot point doesn't make sense or, this needs to happen for the story to move forward and you can get really specific about that. But when you're writing the first draft, you just kind of have to like see what comes out of you. The episode of SpongeBob where um, SpongeBob hits the slab of marble and then like um, Michelangelo's David pops out of it. First draft is just dragging the marble slab into your studio, which is probably a really tired cliche that like a lot of writers have used before. I'm sorry. Someone asked, do you use specific software? No, I use Microsoft Word because that is what I have. I mean, I have pages, I guess, but I use Microsoft Word. I know there's some novel writing technology. I can't remember what it's called. I personally tried one a few years ago and I, I just didn't care. Like it didn't seem like it was any different than Microsoft Word, except that it was harder for me to use. I tend to have a few different documents. I have like the main draft, which has like everything in it. Then I have a separate document that I call fragments that just has like whenever I come up with an idea for the story, no matter where it is in the plot, I just jot it down. And that document can get really long about halfway through because I've like scripted like the next scene that I'm working on, but I've also written like the last scene probably by that point. And then I've written like a few like really exciting climactic moments that I like couldn't wait to get to. And then I have a document called the Bible a story Bible is essentially just where you keep like all of the you know facts and figures and the stats about your characters. At least that's what I use it for. The most recent novel that I wrote, I didn't do that in depth. I just like had everybody's names so I can keep track. In the past, uh, like for the novel that I wrote in 2019, which was a new adult book about a girl who is studying abroad and it's like a love story and a travel story. Woo. I really wanted to keep track of all of the characters' zodiac signs, um, which I hadn't really done before, even though I'm super into astrology as of like two years ago. There's a lot of like, not love triangles, but there's a lot of couples kind of coming apart, coming together, people sw swapping partners. Um, and I wanted to keep track of like who I determined as the God of this world was meant to be based on their astrological charts. And also, um, especially for characters that weren't like the, as prominent, like the main character, I knew everything that she was gonna do and say because it was a first person narrative and I was using her to anchor the story. But for some of the side characters, it was really helpful for me to think about their astrological placements because it, and it gave me as a writer, like shorthand for myself, like how they would react to certain things and what decisions they would make. If you don't believe in astrology, you don't have to do that. Um, or if you just don't care about astrology, you don't have to do that. But if astrology is something that you enjoy and it's something you find fun, that can be a fast way to figure out a character's personality. Like that can be your way of figuring out how they would react to different things, how they handle themselves, how they handle relationships, how they handle school or work, whatever. How do you pace yourself? Do you have daily, weekly, monthly content goals? When I was a junior in college, I think, so when I was writing my fourth novel, I started off just writing, you know, just going whenever I felt like it. And then once the school year started winding down, I had an idea for when I wanted to finish it. So I found this website, I can't remember what it was called, but there's probably a lot of websites that you can find. Look up word count goal calendar or something like that. You can usually just write down like how many words you need to write and then it, you say what date you wanna reach that word count by and then it'll tell you how many words you need to write per day, either 
based on just dividing it evenly amongst the days, or if you want to decide like, oh, I'm going to write more on weekdays than I do on weekends, or vice versa, or whatever, writing that book, which is a novel about the 2016 election, zoinks. And I ended up having a schedule that I ended up outpacing. I set a goal to write like a thousand words a day or something, and I ended up writing like two, th two or three thousand a day because I just got really excited and I wanted to finish it. So I finished like a week or two ahead of schedule. Generally, my overall goal is that I want to write the manuscript within one calendar year, like starting January 1st to December 31st. It's like, just get it done somewhere in there. When I was writing my novel in 2019, it was like September and October that I was wrapping it up and it was that was like the latest I'd ever put it off to. I said that I was gonna write, I think a thousand words a day as well for that. And that I pretty much stuck to. I maybe outpaced it by a little and finished a couple days ahead of schedule. That one I set a word count goal for myself and it's usually a daily goal. I have like an overall yearly goal, like this will get done at some point this year. And then once I get really serious about a project kind of in the weeds of it, sometimes I will decide to give myself a, a daily word count goal. How long do you write in one sitting? Well, kids, it just depends. <laughs> um, when I was in college, I often wrote during class. Um, <laughs> not in my music classes, I promise, if any of my professors are watching this. In my GEs, I, I mean, I wrote all the time. And there were certain classes that I took where I did not need to be like taking rigorous notes. And so I would pay attention, but then if I, I would have my Word document open on my computer with the novel, and if I had an idea for something, I'll write it. There was a couple classes that I wrote longhand, which is, that's so dorky. I took an intro to American Studies class my sophomore year of college, and by the halfway point of the semester, the professor was literally just showing movies every single time, and we weren't tested on them at all. I would often have my notebook out, and I would just be writing longhand uh, scenes from my manuscript that I could recall that I wanted to write. And then I would type them up when I got back to my dorm. In general, one to, one to two hours at a time? That's, that seems about right. I usually get bored of doing most activities after two hours. Who was the first author or what was the first book that made you want to write? Genuinely, I have no idea. I have wanted to be a writer for my entire life. I wrote my first short story when I was seven. I remember it was about a kid who fell off his bike and broke his arm and that's like the whole story. And I wrote it in Comic Sans and I'm pretty sure every sentence was a different color. <laughs> I think being a novelist was something that was always in the back of my mind and I don't really know what triggered it my senior year of high school that I was just like, I'm gonna do this. I think it was just the idea that I had, I was really passionate about. I don't, I don't know. I just always wanted to do it. And then, I mean, reading Aleph Batuman as a junior in college made me want it even more because she just wrote the most special thing that I've ever read and maybe ever will read. I really don't know how I'll ever find a book that I uh, resonates with me more than The Idiot. Do you read other people's fiction while you're writing or what do you read while writing? I definitely do because I'm kind of writing constantly and I'm kind of reading constantly. I remember when I was writing the book about the 2016 election, it was also about police brutality. And so I specifically avoided reading the hate you give because I was worried that if I read it, it would like, I wouldn't be able to write um, my plot line organically. So I still haven't read it. I know it's supposed to be great, but I still haven't read it. I try to read like a healthy balance of whatever's influencing the writing and also stuff that's totally different. So like when I was writing young adult books, I would read, you know, a handful of those at a time, but I would also read nonfiction. I would read poetry. Etc. When I started this most recent one, I was rereading The Idiot for the third time. And I also then reread it again four months later because I'm a monster. Yeah, I tend to read pretty, my, my literary diet remains the same, which is about 50% fiction, about 50% nonfiction, a slight majority of female authors over male authors, about a quarter authors of color. It's about the breakdown. I read, you know, three to five poetry books a year. I don't actually read a ton of poetry. You know, if an author, if a poet that I like comes out with something or I get a recommendation from Kaveh Akbar's Twitter feed, then that'll get read. And then the last question that I got was, when will we get another single? Just you wait. <laughs> That's everything that I got for you guys. Um, I hope this answered your questions and I hope this wasn't super boring. Yeah, if you have any more questions about fiction, DM me and maybe I'll do another video about my writing process. Also, you can ask me about my songwriting process. Maybe that's what we'll do next, because that's a lot more on topic. <laughs> Stream wolves. <laughs> See ya.